Hi everyone, welcome to the first video in the embryology series. Today we will be dealing with fertilization, including acrosomal reaction up until the 4 cell stage. We will not be talking about details of ovulation or sperm capacitation. In order to understand, let's set this in the place. First thing to know are the parts of the oviduct where fertilization usually occurs. The extensions closest to the ovary are called fimbriae. The next segment is the infundibulum, after it comes the ampulla where the fertilization occurs, and finally the isthmus which connects it to the uterus. In short, fimbria help the egg enter the fallopian tube from peritoneal cavity where it travels a short while after ovulation. The egg travels through the infundibulum to the ampulla simultaneously as the sperm enters the vagina and uterus, traveling towards the same spot. Obviously, a great number of sperm cells does this, but to simplify the presentation, I've only drawn one. We all know how they meet and fertilization occurs, but what does really happen microscopically? Let's remember how an egg cell, or oocyte, is built. First, there is a cell membrane filled with cytoplasm containing a pronucleus with a haploid number of chromosomes, meaning 23. The whole structure is surrounded by a crown of cells, corona radiata. Corona is Latin for crown, the literal translation is radiating crown. Between these cells and the cell cytoplasm is a glycoprotein shell called zona pellucida, the transparent zone. This is like an eggshell and the egg will hatch from it later. If we focus on a sperm cell, cell for a while, it is made up of a head also filled with cytoplasm containing a pronucleus. The head also contains an acrosomal cap, which is of paramount importance for the first part of the reaction. The midpiece contains mitochondria, which give the tail the energy for movement. It literally swims towards the oocyte and releases hyaluronidase, which dissolves the corona radiata containing hyaluronic acid. It can do it on its own. A whole army of sperm cells is needed to release this in order for it to take effect. Now that's when the actual reaction begins. The acrosome releases acrosin, which starts digesting the zona pellucida. During this, the sperm cell communicates with the ZP3 protein in the zona pellucida with the receptor and gains access to the membrane. ZP3 literally means zona pellucida 3 protein. This is important to prevent crossbreeding. How? Well, these proteins are species-specific. Once the sperm cell gains access, a second reaction occurs, the zona reaction, or also called cortical reaction. This happens when the sperm touches the cell membrane. A usual calcium signal is sent that attracts the cortical granules within the oocyte to come closer to the membrane. They release lysozyme enzymes, which then change the character of the zona pellucida in order to prevent polyspermy. The sperm cell loses its tail upon the fusion of the membranes of the two cells. The secondary oocyte undergoes second meiotic division, making it an ovum. Then both haploid pronuclei fuse. No cytoplasmic content crosses over from the sperm cell, only pronucleus, meaning the mitochondria together with its DNA is purely maternally inherited, as well as the other organelles. The cell is now a zygote, this means it's totipotent, capable of making any other type of tissue. The corona radiata is dissolved, zona pellucida remains in its change conformation. Cell division starts, the mass does not change the volume, in other words, only cleavage occurs, but not cell growth. First cell divides into two, and then each of these divides into two, making up the four cell stage. Da 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 da